Hey everyone, it's Melinda here. And before we get started, I just wanted to let you know real quick about some of my offerings. You can go on over to my link tree to see all that I have going on. I will put the link in the show notes. It's L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash Lit Lotus, L-I-T-L-O-T-U-S. And that will give you links to all the places you can find me, podcast, website, Instagram, uh, Insight Timer, all those things. Um, and you can check out all the things I'm offering. I'm really excited as I have some new things coming up. I will be sharing probably in the next podcast as I complete some of these projects. Um, so stay tuned for that. But you are welcome to check out my offerings. My Lit Living Inspiration Tribe group is absolutely amazing. So if you are a woman and you are struggling to find life balance, find self-care and time for self-care and just really struggle to make yourself a priority. This is the perfect group for you. Um, But of course, I would love to chat and just see what your goals are and see if you feel like you're a good fit because not everybody is. And of course, we want people in the tribe that are there to find their best self, find their health, mental, physical, and the entire spiritual being. All right, so today's show, um, I hope you enjoy. And if you're new to the Lit Lotus podcast, this is a community of yogis, of empaths, spiritual beings, anyone who's seeking holistic health alternatives for your total well being. Men, women alike, just because my group is for women does not mean that you cannot benefit from this if you're a man. Um, and we're all here to love, we are here to inspire, and we are here to thrive together, hence the name Lit, L I T. Um, so I'm your host, Melinda Van Kirk, and I lead these transformational journeys uh, for better health and wellness. And just the basically finding yourself through self-love and self-care and everything I teach, and it might not even seem like it at the beginning, but everything I teach has to do with you finding the best version of you. You're moving the needle and making progress, right? You're not in this stagnant place or you're not moving backwards. You are moving the needle through these small habit changes. So a lot of what I talk about and teach is habit evolution and what I practice myself. And of course, we are not perfect. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that today. Um, but yeah, just check it out. And all the habit changes are following the ancient wisdom of Ayurveda. If you're not familiar with that, um, go back and listen to one of my earlier podcasts, but it's, it's yoga sister science. And again, it's all about this holistic approach to health and wellness. All right. So today's podcast, I would like to thank my lit member and dear friend, Monica, for coming up with this idea, (laughs) um, this week in our in our group call. And she said she's going to make a meme. And I thought this was fantastic. She said, eat lettuce, save the world. So we're going to title today's podcast, eat lettuce, save the world. And a shout out to Monica for that amazing quote. Um, so let me give you a little background before we get into what the heck I'm talking about, but I've just noticed, and I, I talk about creating space and making room for joy. And I've been trying to do those things, but I've noticed that I haven't done a very good job of this over the last few weeks. And I really have scaled back, but I've just noticed I am blocking myself. I am blocking manifesting my dreams. I'm blocking growing my business. And I'm doing that through this lack of mindset. So, you know, I can tell myself, oh, you're doing great. And I try to tell myself a story, but I haven't been honoring what's really coming up for me emotionally. And so this week, I've noticed a lot of emotions coming up. And over the past couple of weeks, I've been getting extremely dizzy in these strange spells. Like I'm pushing myself hard and then I'm getting so dizzy I have to lie down. Um, I'm trying to function and it's not like I'm running into the walls, at least most of the time. A couple of times I was, I was that dizzy. But you know, I went and had all this blood work done and went to my doctor and really everything's fine. And of course, I'm like, well, my my eyes need to check. So I I need to do that still. And I I have an appointment coming up. But I'm like, there's something more to this. This feels, this doesn't feel like it's physically created. It feels like it's an energy that's stuck. 
And it's like I was stuck in my head. It's like my third eye was just spinning uncontrollably. And not just really the mind, but it was like physically moving so much. Or let me state that again. It was energetically moving so much that it was causing this physical manifestation. And it's like all the energy was stuck up in these upper chakras. And I wasn't able to bring it back into my body. And I've been doing my yoga practices, but those have become almost like I'll do a yoga practice and then it becomes a class. So it's never letting the mind just relax. So as a yoga teacher, I, you know, I have to prep for class and, and I'm very good about pulling out old classes now and kind of letting it flow, which is really helpful. It takes some of the pressure off, but you know, I'll do a practice and I'm like, oh, I love that. And I write it down or like I bring it into my class that day. And and there's nothing wrong with that, but I never allow my brain to turn off. So when I'm teaching, I've noticed I've been teaching four classes a week. I'm I'm scaling back as of next week um, to down to three classes to try that out. But I've just noticed like I'm not, I'm not able to give myself the space. So I'm trying to do all these fun things and joy and, and these are amazing things, but I'm, taking up my free time to do fun things, which is awesome. But like, where's the rest? And where's the restoration in this? Um, And my body's physically now said, no, you're going to rest and I'm forcing you to. And I'm not the other only one. I have a dear friend that's going through something similar, not with dizzy spells, but you know, she's gotten really sick and she had a holiday and she was wanting to do all these fun things. And her body was like, no, you're not going to do it. <laughs> I'm going to make you sit at home and rest. And I think many of us can relate to that. Now, whether it's fun or not fun, but we fill our time. We fill our time and we're always doing, doing, doing. So even when it's doing fun things, because you're like, okay, I listened to Melinda's last podcast and she said, make space and do something fun. And I listened to my own advice there, but what I didn't listen to was the advice that said, make space, right? Just the make space. Because doing fun is super important, but fun almost becomes a chore or it becomes less fun when you're not making space for rest and restoration. There's a reason restoration is the word it is, right? Rest is the, the core of that word. And so I've been lacking with my own self-care and I've been doing my habits. I've been doing the things I teach. I've been eating much better. Um, I had a few weeks where I felt like I kind of fell off a little bit, but, you know, creating healthy meals, um, feeling good in my body overall, digestion's good, sleep has improved. Um, So I'm doing all these things that are really helping me physically, but I'm not allowing that connection from the mental the things I'm telling myself to do, to the physical. And I had this amazing reading on Monday from uh, a woman in South Africa named Milani Britz, and I'll put her website link in the show notes as well. And Milani um, does these readings called Soul Path readings, and I'm going to try not butcher what the reading is, but she takes your given name and your surname at, at birth, And then she puts them into Hebrew characters and there's a numerology connected to those characters. So I didn't understand how my name had anything to do with who I was as a person, but there's an energy to our names. And it was just so fascinating how many of the things she said, in fact, everything she said resonated with me. And I don't think I've ever had a reading like that. No astrological readings. Um, My human design reading was amazing, but I won't say every single thing resonated with me. Um, so this type, this reading was just so different and the way it broke everything down and my strengths and things for me to work on. And it was just amazing. So I highly suggest you get a reading if you, if that interests you, but what this reading showed me was that I wasn't connecting. I was blocking my own ability to manifest things because I was in my head. And so it was, I just didn't realize how important it was for me to ground. And part of my self-care now is in my meditation practices and through my yogic practices because we can ground into our bodies. So when we say grounding, we're bringing the energy back to our bodies. All right, we're bringing that energy back in. We're not stuck in our heads. The, The lower three chakras are our physical body. So that's your security and your root chakra 
um, your emotional body is, is in your sacral chakra, and then your center of doing and power, personal power, is in your solar plexus. And these three chakras together are what help us come back into our bodies. So it's sort of connecting this gateway, or Shashumna Nadi is the, the main energy center that runs through the body along the spine. And that's connection from these upper chakras, from my third eye, from my mental state. You know, we've all experienced where we're in our heads a lot, and we need to bring that energy down. And so I am on this path of finding more self-care because that's what I'm preaching to everyone, right? That's what I'm telling everyone to do. You need to take time for yourself. You need to find more time. And it's easier said than done. And I feel personally, and this was in my reading as well, that I need to embody an experience in in order to share it with someone else. I'm not here just to um, download, although I do kind of get these downloads and and channel some of this information, but I need to embody whatever it is that I'm speaking about. So through example, for you all, I'm embodying this idea of like, yes, I'm cutting back. So next week, I'm down a yoga class. I am cutting back on some of the things and I'm going to focus on some of these unfinished projects that need to be done um, in order for me to quit blocking myself because that's what I'm doing, right? I've had this website started how many months ago? Six months ago and it's still not done, um, the new website. So what does this have to do with eating lettuce and saving the world? (laughs) You're probably wondering that or maybe not, but I'm going to remind you. So when you raise... When you, when you do for yourself, when you do self-care, you're taking that time and space, and let me emphasize space, because you need to give yourself space in order to raise your vibration. And I talked a couple episodes ago, or maybe it was the last one, about raising your vibration. And so when you raise your vibration of yourself first, you... Raise the vibration of every person that you come into contact with, every being you come into contact with, even the ground beneath your feet. Your whole perspective shifts. And in order to shift your perspective, you need to take time for self-care. You need to feel good in your body. And you need to say, fuck these other things. I, I need to do what I need to do for me. And set those boundaries. And so this is my ever striving goal. And I think for a lot of us out there, setting boundaries is a struggle. I'm going to say, especially for women that were raised in a way where they are the caretakers and are expected to be the caretakers. And I think, honestly, in our society, women are still expected to be the caretakers 95% of the time, maybe 99% of the time. It's an unwritten thing, and we have to decondition that. Women are seen as more nurturing, which isn't necessarily true, right? You can be a woman and maybe you don't have that natural instinct to nurture, but your husband does and you guys are a nice balance or partner, excuse me. But you know, the other person you're with balances that out in you and they're the nurturer. Men are not allowed to be nurturers historically. And so they take on this role of being this guy that brings home the bread and, and you know, it's a new generation now, so that's shifting. But in my generation, Generation X, it's still very prevalent. And I don't think I saw it for many years. But allowing yourself to be authentically you and also say, like, screw it, I have to, I have to do what's right for me. My boss has an expectation, wants me to do this and this and this. I'm so afraid to tell them that I can't do it because I need to do this other thing first in order to take care of myself. Like, that's the reality. In order to find self care, you're going to have to have hard conversations and you're going to have to set your boundaries. But when you do, one, you're going to feel insanely empowered, (laughs) right? No matter what the result is. And you might think it's a negative result if your boss is like, be here at 8 a.m. or you're fired. You know, maybe that's not the right job for you. And those decisions and actions can be scary sometimes. But if you're doing it from a place of good intent, it's always going to work out for you. It is. That's just 
the law of attraction. You're attracting good things to yourself when you do good things for yourself. Your energy is a mirror to the world of who you are and they reflect it back to you. Or maybe I should say the people around you are the mirror. Your energy radiates out and that's going to be received by everyone around you and it's going to come back to you. It's going to come back to you tenfold because you're that beacon of light and when we're all a beacon of light and we're all shining so bright together, we reflect that light back. We, we embrace it. We uplift each other. There's not fighting. There's not discourse. There's no anger. We don't destroy Mother Earth. We, you know, there's, it's just transformation happens and that transformation happens with you. And so today I told myself that transformation is happening with me. I'm stepping into my authentic self and part of my reading, she was talking about lies of omission and a lie of omission would just being not forthright and forthcoming, right? It'd be hiding one part of me because I'm afraid of what other people think. And so I told myself, no more. And it's hardest with the people that I'm closest to. And I've been making this progress steadily. And I'm honestly really proud of the progress I've made. I think back a year ago, two years ago, I wouldn't have talked anything about energy healing. Are you crazy? I would have been like hiding it or just saying, oh, well, it, it works. But, you know, it's been scientifically proven, yada, yada, yada. You know, science is great, but fuck science sometimes. I'm so sick of everyone needing a scientific explanation for everything. And maybe because I was that person that triggers it in me now because I'm not that person. And it doesn't mean mean I believe every single thing that comes my way. But when I experience something and I embody it, I know it to be true. So I know that we are all made of energy. And I know that we can shift and change. And I know that we can raise our vibration and create this magical, wonderful world for ourselves. We can. And we start by taking care of ourselves physically and emotionally and mentally and energetically. It's all those things. And when you do those things for yourself, you're going to see such amazing shift in who you are. Because I'm not the same person I was three years ago. I'm certainly not the same person I was 10 years ago or 20 years ago. And maybe my essence is the same. My, my spirit is the same. But the other stuff, the physical self is different. And so I'm asking all of us to start to think about why do you want the things you want in life? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to circle back around to how this is going to help you raise your vibration. But I'd like you, let's all take a moment And if you're not driving, just begin to think about with the eyes closed, the things that you want in life. Maybe it's a new or bigger house. It's a new car. Maybe it's just money to pay the bills this month. Maybe you want to have freedom to travel the world. And these are all amazing, amazing goals, right? And then I want you to ask yourself, what are you going to get out of these things or experiences? Or maybe it's you want to lose 20 pounds. You want to feel healthy again. You're, you want your you know, res- blood test results to be better and your diabetes to you know, be, be gone. Like, What is it that you want? And feel into that. Feel it in your heart center. If you want to travel the world, what are you seeking? Why do you want that thing? And maybe you're seeking fun and adventure. Okay, if I I want fun and adventure, freedom, I want freedom, right? I want the freedom to travel the world and see new sights and enjoy new experiences. What does that freedom bring you? Happiness joy, security, what words are coming up for you? Feel into that. 
Feel that emotion or that experience in your heart. Let the breath flow in and out of your heart center. Take a nice deep breath in through the nose. Exhale out the mouth. Blink the eyes open. And if you're somewhere where you have a pen handy, just grab a pen, piece of paper, write down your words. And I want you to put these words somewhere that you can see them as a reminder. And ask yourself, where do I need to see these every day? And it might need to move, right? We start getting blind spots after a little while. But put your words in the middle of your computer screen that you have to move every day. Put it on a post-it. And know that those words are there for you. So anytime you're feeling stressed out or feeling like you can't do it, or you're feeling like I'm not good enough for this, or, I'm not worthy of self-care, or, I'm not able to do all these things, I want you to look at those words and feel into those words because this is what you're really seeking. You're seeking that state of mind, that emotion. You want to embody those things and you know when you travel the world, those things, emotions happen for you that state of mind happens for you your whole being shifts and you know what you've done you've just raised your vibration just right now by feeling those things you've raised your vibration and you meditated today if you didn't realize that and now when you feel those emotions and you go see someone in your life Maybe you see a boss that you've had a little bit of trouble with and then you look at that boss and you're like, man, they probably just want the same thing I do. They want to feel happiness and emotions and maybe they're misguided on their path. I don't even like to use misguided because we have an experience to have an experience. Like there's a reason for this. So maybe your boss just is on a different path and they need to have their own experiences in order to transcend. And not everyone's going to be able to step up into the same space that you are. I'm assuming if you're listening to this podcast, you're on your spiritual journey. But I do envision at some point in most people's lives, they have a moment of reflection, even if it's right before death. Or when they're really sick, maybe they have cancer and they've been given a month to live. And your whole perspective shifts in that moment. And you can shift your perspective right now. Because you can raise your vibration right now in any moment. And you keep raising your vibration by doing all of these things for yourself. And guess what? When you do for yourself, maybe that boss at work that you've had trouble with all of a sudden starts to see you differently. They feel your energy differently. And you recognize that like, hey, I can shift my world by shifting who I am because the energy I give out is what's sent back to me. And the people that maybe used to bring me down, I don't let them bring me down anymore. I'm setting my boundaries with them and I'm not allowing that to happen. And I'm sending out the good energy and I'm going to receive it in return. So coming back to eat lettuce, save the world. Mm -hmm. You might start to make that connection now, right? When you eat healthy foods, those foods actually have a higher vibration. And I mean unprocessed foods, freshly cooked foods, foods out of your garden or from the farmer's market. Those are the foods that are going to raise your vibration because they actually have a higher vibration. They actually have energy. They have that fresh prana, as we say in yoga, or chi. And that energy is what fuels you. And so when you eat high vibrational foods, you're feeding your vibration. You're raising your vibration. You're taking care of your body and your mind. And these are one thing. Your body and your mind, they're all one, right? Sometimes we see them as separate things, but they're not. Your mindset changes how your body feels. And when your body feels good, it changes your mindset. And so eat lettuce, save the world. 
when you do for you and you know that that choice of having, let's say, a salad with lunch today and not going to McDonald's or not buying even what we think is healthy, like, and there's no disrespect to these companies, but you know, if I go to Bibby Bop, there's probably a lot of sodium in my food. No, the food isn't organic. I know that. When I cook it myself, I know what's in that. And I've also put my love in it. And that love of what I'm cooking for myself raises my vibration. And one of the best things you can do while you're making your food is put on some high vibe music, dance around the house. All right, we talked about last time, I think we talked about your walkout song or like playing that fun music that raises you up. So when you can make the whole experience enjoyable, you're putting that good energy in your food. And that good energy in your food comes into your body. And when that energy leaves your body, I'm using the word energy loosely here, but when that food leaves the body and it goes back into the earth, it becomes fertilizer, right? Just like animals. And so when animals eat organic, and I hate to use organic, but like foods, it used to just be called food, right? Before we had pesticides. But when the animals that you're eating intake good food and those plants were treated well, and you know it's just this whole cycle, you're creating better food, you're eating better food, you're bringing your vibration up. When you do your yoga practice in the morning, you're coming back into your body. You're raising your vibration physically and mentally. And I can't stress this enough. And there's so much resistance behind doing daily exercise. And I know I was that way for many years. And I'm not saying go do the things you hate doing. That's not required, okay? (laughs) If you absolutely hate lifting weights, find another way to strengthen your your body. Do yoga. Practice arm balances. (laughs) Go outside and do some heavy lifting in the yard, right? Like there's other things that you can probably do to find your strength. But you're doing things that you enjoy, that are fun. And once you get moving, most of the time you actually like what you're doing. That's going to keep you coming back. And that's going to raise your vibration. And you're going to be able to tap into that mental state of expansiveness. And you're creating space in your body. You're creating space in your mind. Just like when you declutter everything. When you clear out your closet, how good does that feel? You have cleared out all the crap that you no longer need. You've given it to somebody else that can really use the clothes, meaning that can't afford things right now. And it allows them to be grateful and happy that they found the clothes that you donated. And then you have this beautiful organized space and you can walk into your closet or look at it as you open the doors and just go, ah. It feels good to look in my closet. It feels good to be able to fit into all the clothes that I have in here, right? Sometimes we hold on to things that used to fit us five years ago in this attempt to salvage what used to be. I used to be a size two and now I'm a size 10 and I really want this two still. Like, let it go. If it's not bringing you joy and you look at that and you just think back of how you used to look and you want to look like that again, that is not serving you. Let it go. Create space. Raise your vibration. And when you raise your vibration and you're back in your body and you give space to the mind, you will start to receive. You will receive, and not just things. I mean, you can manifest your goals. Maybe you manifest money. But you receive downloads from the universe. You receive amazing ideas and inspiration. And your chakras are all aligned and you are in balance. And you allow that energy flow from the earth, from your Gaia gateway, all the way above your crown to your soul star chakra. And that energy flows up and down through the body, through your aura. The Shiva energy rises up from the earth and Shakti comes down from the heavens. And when they meet, it's magic. And your vibration is as high as it can be. And you may have reached that state in deep meditations, And you allow the kundalini energy to rise, right? You feel that transformation in your body and it's like an out-of-body experience, but you're in your body. It's absolutely amazing. And we're here on this earth to serve a purpose. We have a purpose here. 
We didn't just show up on this planet to work a nine to five. And that doesn't mean you don't work a nine to five. It means that you have a purpose with what you're doing. So raising the vibration of yourself is why you're here. It's not, I'm here to be Jeff Bezos. <laughs> you know, Jeff Bezos is here to be Jeff Bezos. And I know nothing about him, except he's, you know, has a ton of money and started Amazon. But when you get into these like maniacal tendencies and like self important and uh, Logan Roy on succession, <laughs> like that mindset is really screwed up. And those people aren't happy. You know, when you're seeking something outside of yourself to find your happiness, you're not going to find it. And that doesn't mean that traveling the world doesn't make you happy, because I think I could absolutely be thrilled traveling the world, but I still need to find my happiness in myself. All right? If I don't, I'm never going to find it somewhere else. I could be paid all the money in the world, or I could be the poorest person in the world, and neither one of those things determines my happiness. So I ask you today, what is the smallest step you can do to raise your vibration, to bring your energy up? And what are the steps and things that you want to start doing? And sometimes it can feel so overwhelming. Here I'm telling you, do your yoga every day, eat good foods every day. I mean, every day's, you know, a great goal. But it's never going to be 100%. Aim for 80%. That's always my goal. If I can get to 80%, I think I'm doing really well. 80% is an A plus in my book, not a B minus. All right. And it kind of feels good to be like, I'm aiming for a B minus. Because if you were in school, now, depending on what your grades were, but like, I was always aiming for that A. So, you know, a B minus would have made me really sad. I like to be able to say, oh, I have the freedom to just aim for a B minus. That feels awesome. (laughs) okay and if I don't meet 80% that week okay so I made a 60 this week that's better than zero right there's no grade no one's telling me I'm failing it's up to me to make the changes and I'm you know I'm my biggest critic chances are you, you are your biggest critic but starting with something because I guarantee you have two minutes in the morning you can make two minutes if you can do one sun salutation and sit and breathe for a total of two minutes, you've started your journey because you've done something. And I know most people are like, two minutes, that's crazy. Let's say you just sit on your mat and breathe for two minutes. You don't even move yet. You're starting with sitting on your mat and then you're going to stretch for a few seconds. You're still showing up. You're showing up for you and you're starting to carve out that time. If you make one meal a week, you've at least started to show up, right? But I will say consistency is key, and consistency is what's going to help you meet your goals. And not consistency of running through the drive-thru, but consistency of doing the things that are raising your vibration. That's going to move the needle. And little bit by little bit by little bit, the habits evolve and they change. And all of a sudden, you just start doing it. All of a sudden, your routine in the morning is so ingrained that you sit up in bed and you give gratitude before you even step out of the bed. I step out of the bed every day after I've given gratitude for my body. And I say, it's going to be a great day. Today's going to be a great day. Thank you, universe, for this amazing day. And I've already done something to raise my vibration. And I have just woken up. I'm not stuck and ruminating on all the things I have to do today. I'm not running out of the bed so quickly. Oh, I'm late. I take five seconds and I give gratitude because you are the controller of your own time. Now, sometimes we get lost because we want to prioritize other things and you know you have to be somewhere. I do that all the time, but you know, I recognize I'm not a victim to time. I don't say, oh, I don't have the time. And when I do, I kind of like stop myself because I know that I can make the time to do what I need to do. I make my schedule. I make my time. And even if you have to be at work at nine every day and you can't leave till six, that's fine. But you get to make your schedule in the rest of the day. 
And you probably even can make some of your schedule at work. You can take your breaks. You can take a lunch. You don't have to eat at your desk. You can choose because you set your boundaries. And doing something is something. It is not nothing. It is something. And sometimes we need a little support to do our something. So finding like-minded people that want to share in this raising of your vibration with you and of themselves is so important. So finding those people that can support you in your life, that make changes with you, is going to get you to your goals faster and it's going to help you achieve the goals that you want. And that's what I do in my, my group, the Living Inspiration Tribe. That's what we do. We support each other. We talk about all the woo-woo stuff, all the energy healing. We talk about raising our vibration. And we end up with the meme, eat lettuce, save the world. Right? So you're an amazing person, an amazing soul, amazing spirit. And we are here to lift each other up. And I know I... I want you to be the best person you can be. I want me to be the best person I can be. Because when you're the best person, oh my goodness, think of how the world would be if we all had a high vibration right now. The animals, the trees, all beings. We would come from this place of love and that's really what it's all about. Energy healing is the same thing. We're sending love and light Because we just want everyone to have a high vibration. My life is meant to be in service. I learned that in my reading this week. I and I felt so good and reassuring. I am meant to be in service to others. And when I'm not in service to others, I'm doing myself a disservice. I'm here to connect, I'm here to teach, I'm here to lead groups, I'm here to do all those things. And so it felt so good and reassuring to know that I'm on my right path. And that, that, you know, we often second guess ourselves, myself included, but coming from this place of embodied wisdom and of being in my body and connecting to my body every day has allowed me to become more of this channel to share and spread information and have these downloads. And I think half the time, these I don't even know where these thoughts come from, right? They just flow in. And that's when you know it's from your higher self and from from all this wonderful universal energy we're surrounded with and everything. All right, folks, thank you so much for listening today. I hope you have an amazing, amazing week. Uh, next podcast will be probably coming out. I've been doing about every three weeks or so. So I look forward to sharing the next one with you. Please reach out if you have any questions. You can find out more about who I am and what I do. My current website is melindavankirk.com, soon to be litlotus.me. Getting closer, still not there, but one of my many projects to complete. And I'm really excited about it because I think it's going to be much more easy to navigate than my current one. Um, And here is to you to raise your vibration, give you a little cheers with my glass of tea or cup of tea. And yeah, I hope that you reach out. Feel free to book a discovery session with me if you want to know a little bit more. And I can just help you get clear on your goals and see if we're a good fit to work together. And if not, I may be able to help you and find somebody that is. Or if you just want to reach out and just send me your thoughts. I'm on Insight Timer. I've got some meditations on there. I do yoga practices weekly. And I just love to connect with people. So um, anything you want to send me, send a high five or hello or whatever it is. Let me know how you raised your vibration today. And I would just love to hear all about you. All right, folks, take care. I'll talk to you soon. Sending you so much love and light. 